Welcome to Excel assignment number seven. This is a database of all the company cars that you own in your business. This is a rather extensive spreadsheet, so we're going to split the lesson into three parts. You can see the lesson contents on the screen. First of all, we're going to use importing to create a text file into a spreadsheet. The second is we'll introduce three new formulas, left, middle, and right. We'll use VLOOKUP formulas to create a value out of a table. We'll review the IF formula. We'll use the CONCATENATE formula to put cells together. We'll work on a pivot table. And lastly, we'll import our documents into Microsoft Word. Your company fleet manager might have a computer system that does tracking and he's asking you to do some analysis now on the cars that are in your company. Usually when a person gives you a database you have a few options. You can modify it in a database program such as Access or perhaps what you're more familiar with is with Excel. And so we're going to use a database aspect of how Excel works today. You'll see that they have a, the spreadsheet on the screen shows the cars that we own in the company with some IDs, some miles, their cars, and years, and their makes, their numbers, the principal driver. And so we're going to do several steps with database functions using Excel. First of all, you won't get a spreadsheet when you ask for uh, inventories. Usually what you get is a text file. And so what I have on the desktop here is a spreadsheet in the form of a text file. If I double click this, it looks ugly. You see that it is not in a spreadsheet format, at least not yet. This is what you get from reports, from sales data, from your uh, Amazon account or your insurance company or your bank. These formats are called text formats. They don't have any. They don't have any spreadsheet uh, graphs. They don't have any colors. It's just straight text. But Excel knows how to work with these very well. You notice all these commas here? These are all separators. They show the different columns that will come in the spreadsheet. So I'll show you how to work with this now. I'm going to close this first and start Excel. Now instead of starting by working with uh, the file itself, we have to import it. So I'm going to the word file and I'm going to open a document and I'm going to choose this text file. I have to go find it first. So I click on computer and let's browse and let's navigate to the desktop. That's where I have this file saved. And it doesn't show up. Why not? Well, remember the extension on a text file is TXT and Excel is just looking for spreadsheets right now. So I'm going to change the filter here to show all files on the desktop and then scroll through it again and there it is. There's the car inventory, TXT. Now when I open it, it's going to ask me some questions. How do I handle this? What do I do? Uh, are these like uh, text files that are equal sized cells each or are they delimited? Well, these are all separated by commas as you can see in the preview. And so we're going to stick with the delimited idea. Choose next. And how are they delimited is the next question. Are they separated by tabs, semicolons, commas, spaces, or something else? Well, these are all separated by commas. And as soon as I click comma, you notice all these t columns seem to line up as they are intended. And so that looks like I'm on the right track. I'll click finish. And so now I have the start of my spreadsheet. Each comma creates a separate column in the spreadsheet. Let's take you through some steps here. You're going to have to follow this pretty closely. There's no uh, room for creativity on this assignment. Just follow exactly how it's presented here. First of all, let's change the columns so that the column headers so that they can show the entire title. So we'll use text wrapping. The first thing I would like to do is introduce some new formulas that are able to handle text. You can take pieces of a field and create new fields. For instance, whoever invented this car ID for the company was trying to squeeze as much information into the ID as possible. And so we used a code like FD for Ford, 06 for the year, MTG for Mustang, and 001 is the car number. 
That's not normally recommended to try to squeeze data into a field like this, but that's what he's doing. So we need to come up with a few ideas on how to separate these fields. Let's go to where it says make. I want to take the first two letters off of each of these data items. So the first two letters is going to be using a formula called left. And if I, cho if I choose that, you notice the options are first of all choose text. Well I'm going to choose this as my text and the next after this comma is the number of letters. Well in my database it looks like the first two letters are the manufacturers names. So let's use a close parenthesis and sure enough you can see that it's just slicing off the first two letters of the database. Well let's fill this down and see what we have here all the way to the bottom how many are there looks like 53 and so you can see we have two letters for each of the make now what do those mean let's let's create let's create a new formula and we're going to put in column C the manufacturer's name I'd like to put in just the word Ford or down here General Motors TY must stand for Toyota HO is Honda CR is Chrysler and HY is Hyundai. We're going to introduce a new function here called a lookup table. Let's take these items here like CR and HY and TY and HO and GM and FD. These are all our manufacturers. And let's actually put the real name here. Okay, you can see that I've created a small table that coordinates these abbreviations with the full name. To make this work though, I have to have these in alphabetical order. So I'm going to highlight these, just these cells, not the whole table, and sort them. So I look for the data command and sort. It says, what do you want to sort by? I want to sort by the first column and click OK. If you don't put them in alphabetical order, this next process is not going to work. Now that I've got these charts here, I'm going to look them up. I'm going to look up FD in the chart and put in the word Ford. The computer function to do that is called equals V lookup. That means vertical lookup. It's going to look through a table vertically, look up the words FD or the letters FD, and then return the second column, which is Ford. So let's type in the whole command here, lookup and let's follow all these options through. First of all, the first item it's looking for is the lookup value. So FD is the lookup value. Put a comma. And then the, the next item says table array. The table is the little set of data at the bottom. I'm going to scroll down. This table and then a comma. Then it says column index number that means which column in this table contains the real word that you're looking for not the abbreviation but the real word so the second column contains Chrysler Ford General Motors so I'm going to type a 2 up here and a comma and then actually this is the uh, the only option that we need we can close the parentheses now press enter and scroll to the top notice it says Ford looks like it's working be careful there's still one error with this but we'll discover that in a moment if I fill this down you're going to notice there's a relative reference error problem everything stops working after the third row it has this NA which means not available or not accessible and so what's going on well if I double click on the second item and you'll see that this table is looking at rows 57 through 62 and you notice down here that it's been shifted down one that should send an alert to your mind to say oh the computer is using relative references instead of absolute references so if I go back to Ford and double click this I'm going to modify this so I'm going to put in a dollar sign in front of 56 and a dollar sign in front of 61 so that means that it's always going to use those row numbers 
every time I look up a value. And now it looks like it's creating the, the results I want. So let's go all the way to the bottom. And you see that we've created a new field in our database that shows the manufacturer's name.